here on Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, in Louisiana, newly disclosed documents reveal a state intelligence agency regularly spied on activists opposing construction of the Bayou Bridge pipeline, which would carry nearly a half million barrels of oil per day across Louisiana's wetlands. The documents show the Louisiana governor's Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness regularly drafted intelligence memos on anti-pipeline activists, including a gathering of indigenous-led water protectors who set up a protest encampment along the pipeline's route. Other newly revealed documents show close coordination between Louisiana regulators and the company building the pipeline, Energy Transfer Partners. In some cases, state regulators use language drafted by the pipeline company in its public documents. This comes just one week after a U.S. district judge in Baton Rouge ordered a temporary injunction against the construction of the Bayou Bridge pipeline in order to prevent further irreparable harm to the region's delicate ecosystems while corporate challenges proceed. Critics of the pipeline include retired lieutenant general Russell Honoré, who led the relief efforts in New Orleans after Katrina. He's featured in a new short film by the Louisiana Bucket Brigade about the pipeline. I'm Russell Honoré, lieutenant general of the United States Army. I spent 37 years, three months and three days in the United States Army. Retired in 2008 as a 33rd commander, and I moved back to Louisiana, my home state. Most people will have some reference to me in Hurricane Katrina. I was a Joint Task Force commander. Help us now! Help us now, damn it! Well, the state of Louisiana has been blessed with natural resources. We're called a sportsman's paradise, but we're the second largest energy producer in America. That comes at a cost. Wealth from the oil and gas industry has hijacked our democracy. Over time, our wetlands have been destroyed, much by the exploration industry. And of course, between New Orleans and Baton Rouge, we've got a hundred chemical plants. All of them try to do the minimum when it comes to clean air. When you go west from Baton Rouge, you get off into the oil patch, and you work your way toward Lake Charles, which is turned into a production corridor of oil and gas with refineries and chemical plants. The other issue we have is pipelines. When you got 170,000 miles already in your state. My big concern with pipelines is we don't have the laws, we don't have the people, we don't have the regulation, and we don't have fines and penalties that motivate companies to prevent oil spills you know how to replace pipeline now? When it breaks. And it breaks in towns and communities. It breaks out in the swampland. It breaks next to lakes and rivers here in Louisiana. And in the case of this Bayou Bridge pipeline, our energy and transfer partners do not have a good history. They have multiple spills way too frequently. It's time for the people of Louisiana to stand up. Otherwise, people a century from now will be cursing us. Because we watched this happen in plain sight. That's retired Lieutenant General Russell Honoré, who led the relief efforts in New Orleans after Katrina. Other opponents of the Bayou Bridge pipeline include members of the Mount Triumph Baptist Church in St. James, Louisiana. Don't treat me like they used to. Freetown is actually a historical black community which is in St. James Parish on the west bank of the Mississippi River. The actual township was founded after slavery. I'm church administrator, also usher. My mom was baptized here. My grandmother was a member here. So it runs deep. Thirteen years ago, we were designated an industrial land use area. 
Currently, there are approximately 118 tanks in this area. We know that the pipelines leak. We know that the tanks do have emissions. We know that it causes cancer. We know you get upper respiratory. We know that there's asthma. We know you have skin irritations, stomach headaches, you name it. The Valley Bridge Pipeline gonna come in, that means that we're gonna have more tanks. We can't afford to have nothing else in this area. That's just gonna destroy what we have. I think they have put us underneath the bus. And it ain't nothing new. It's always the poets, the black, and the Indians, or the Hispanics. They just figure they can walk over people. A few whites that was here, they have been bought out already. We're gonna be the one to suffer the burdens. They build on top of African American communities. Well, they don't expect to fight. And there's no such thing as this pipeline is never gonna leak. It's gonna happen. It's just a matter of when. That piece produced by the Louisiana Bucket Brigades. And for more, we're joined by three guests. Uh, you saw in that video Pastor Harry Joseph of the more than century old, more than 130 year old Mount Triumph Baptist Church in St. James. Ann Rolfus is with us, founding director of the Louisiana Bucket Brigade, which is producing these videos. And Pamela Spees of the Center for Constitutional Rights, senior staff attorney on the No Bayou Bridge. Project, but she also is from Louisiana, from Lake Charles. You're the beginning of the pipeline, and um, um, and Reverend, you're the end of this pipeline. Right. Um, let's begin with Pam. You're from there, and you're bringing this lawsuit. And as we started this piece, talking about the surveillance of the activists, mm -hmm. people like the Reverend, people like Anne. Talk about what you have found uh, and the significance of this pipeline project. Well, you know, what we what we found, there are a number of lawsuits that we have, have filed on behalf of the groups who are opposing this pipeline, and one of them was against the Department of Environmental Quality for these records. And what was so um, astonishing to see, probably not surprising for folks who have lived in Louisiana, uh, but the the fact of the surveillance that it was confirmed that you have um, intelligence officers in the governor's office of homeland security who are doing these assessments of these these small groups right who are doing everything they can to engage in civil disobedience and and protest this project and and try to stop it and you know before it before the permits um, and then, you know, those, those assessments are being sent to all of the other law enforcement agencies and to the heads of the environmental regulatory agencies. And yet what we did not see in the emails that we got from this agency is any discussion of the pipeline company's history of accidents, right? So here you have a pipeline company which is, is notorious in the industry for its record of leaks and spills, and yet we didn't see anything. In, the, in these records that showed any concern, any, any discussion about that. And yet what, what, they, what the concern is, is the folks who are opposing it. Well, the, the extraordinary uh, record of, the, of these uh, emails and the surveillance that you uncovered, I, I, it's, it's as if they were, like, investigating a criminal operation right. here just because you were uh, opposing the, the, uh, the pipeline. Uh, Burr and Rick Moore, the intelligence officer who offered the emails, uh, uh, at one point says, quote, in the case of terrorism, to wait for an indication of crime before investigating it is, is to wait too long. There's no guarantee of success, but there has to be a guarantee of effort. Let's make it hard to hurt us. If you see something suspicious, report it. Uh, Ann Rolfus, what do you, when you saw these emails, what was your reaction? I do see something suspicious, and it's that Energy Transfer Partners has polluted drinking water around the country. They have a track record of accidents, and that's what the agencies clearly ought to be investigating and not regular people who are exercising our First Amendment rights. It's, you know, on the one hand, it's a pretty ridiculous situation, and yet they're forwarding a picture of me to, to the FBI 
and to the Department of Home and, and to the, you know other agencies and to the National Guard. And then when I see footage from North Dakota and from Standing Rock of the National Guard on site using rubber bullets on people and tear gas, I mean, it, it's chilling, which is exactly what they intend. Now, of course, the Dakota Access Pipeline in North Dakota, that also owned by Energy Transfer Partners, as is the Bayou Bridge. Yes, and, and the pipeline. Bayou Bridge Pipeline is the southern leg of the Dakota Access Pipeline. So it's connected in every way, clearly, including their surveillance and techniques. And what about the connection of the sheriffs in Louisiana to what's happening in North Dakota? You've spoken about visits. Yes. Uh, so the, the, there's a parish called St. Charles Parish, where the sheriff, who is Greg Champagne, was president of the National Sheriff's Association. And so he took a trip to Standing Rock to, to help the Morton County, which is where the pipeline was, the Morton County Sheriff's Department, and came back and had a, had a very aggressive Facebook post. Uh, saying that the, the people who were objecting to the pipeline were violent and, and castigating opponents um, as people who, who deserved law enforcement uh, watching them. And so, again, that, that's concerning for us. What we then see Sheriff Champagne do is, is stand in front of a, a gas pipeline explosion in Louisiana just shortly thereafter when a man was killed, saying, no problem here, major, major fire in the, in the swamp. But nothing to see here, talking to the news cameras as if this is normal and as if this is okay. And, and Pastor Harry Joseph, uh, the impact of, uh, first of all, the, the overall industry, the energy industry uh, on Louisiana and specifically on your community and your concerns about uh, this pipeline? Well, we already have a lot of stuff in our area. Uh, we have plants and we have the tank farm already there. And with this pipeline coming in, that's just telling me there are going to be some more tanks. And with the tanks that they have, they're not very much protected because they're leaks. And they breed, and we, when they bleed those tanks, we breed whatever coming out. And what I'm concerned about with this one is that we don't know what we're going to, what coming through the pipe. We don't know what we're going to be breeding. And we already have people, like you heard already, that we are sick. People are got cancer, people dying with cancer. Nobody wants to take responsibility for what is going on now. So who's going to take responsibility for what's going to go on in the future? Mm. You know? Talk about what you're facing right now. Well, right now we're facing, like I said, we're facing that we in a community where we don't have a right of way out if something do happen. We have the Sunshine Bridge, and then we have a, a little town called Moonshine. And between the Sunshine Bridge and Moon Town, you're talking at least about 30 miles. And between that, they got plants already there. They got oil field there, you can, well, all tanks. And we have people that live there. We had the land called Burden Land, which was half between them. That was our exit route. The, uh, the plant barred that and shut it off. So now people can't get out if they had to get out. And we've been fighting for at least two, at least three years to get a right of way. And our local government can't give us a right of way. Was your community consulted and your church consulted uh, when it came to the building of this pipeline? Yeah. Uh, like I said, the community, uh, we all went to—we went to court. We went to the uh, community. We went to our local meetings. And we went in high numbers to let them know that we didn't want this. But they still voted it in, because in our community, we have a, a seven panel of councilmen. And in our area, we have three blacks and— four whites. And when they voted that out, a lot of people was hurting because uh, we had a 4-3 vote. And we just knew we was going to win this battle. But we lost it. And, and the 4-3 vote was it along color lines? You all in four white and three blacks. And we knew we had it won because one of the councilmen, and I want to say the third district, he asked a question, what come through the pipe? And they told him that they couldn't tell him that. He said what oil would go through, through the, the pipe. pipe. And they told him that they couldn't. He, the pipeline company told him that they couldn't tell him. And I knew then that we had won, but at the end, he still voted yeah. And, 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 and Pamela Spees, in, in terms of the uh, what you're uh, the way that the companies have worked together with local officials and, and, and uh, even the state to craft uh, regulations and legislation on this. Can you talk about that as well? Well, I think there's, you know, what, what we're seeing in the records is the working together on the approval process for these projects. But we know that there's an, a massive lobbying 
uh, effort and that, you know, that the the corporate interests, the oil and gas interests, are baked into the political process. It's just, it's, it's the it's the go-to concern, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to folks showing up and 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 trying to bring a different voice in, into uh, the discussion. And so it's the deck is is really stacked. And I think what was, um, and that's you know for folks who are from Louisiana, who, you know, grew, who grew up there, it's something that was sort of in the air that you breathed and you understood that that was the case. But what I think is is um, changing now is that folks are beginning to question it. I think after the BP spill and and watching what happened at Standing Rock and then the growing awareness about this pipeline and who's behind it um, is is actually bringing bringing more folks and, and what about the argument that the companies say that they're creating jobs that they're making it possible for the economy of Louisiana to uh, to thrive well what's what's been so interesting about that is what these folks have documented on the job sites right so all of the the workers who are constructing this pipeline appear to be from out of state um, you know that's something that that these folks have documented and tried to bring to the attention of governor john bell edwards um, who has who has used this as a as a rallying point for support for this project. I want to turn to a clip from Sarah Week, an annual energy conference in Houston. This is the CEO of Energy Transfer Partner, Kelsey Warren. You're talking about somebody needs to be removed from the gene pool. We, we had people <laughs> drilling holes in our pipe, drilling holes. Now, now, they didn't know that we didn't have oil in the pipe at the time, but had they, they, they would have found out in a very, very bad way. And so, uh, you know, it's just the, it, we, we're, we're combating something that's relatively new, but it's all of our problems. And, um, and, and I, we, we were slow to respond. I, I think I mentioned to you, Dan, when we talked earlier that, that we were slow to respond to social media. We, we had a CEO, me, that, uh, that was kind of out of touch with that a little bit behind on that. And, and we don't do that anymore. We, we monitor social media and there's constant lies being said about our company that we're, that we're having to police. Uh, if you can talk about um, uh, Ann Rolfes, if you can respond to what uh, uh, Kelsey Warren said, the CEO of Energy Transfer Partners, who he was referring to. In Louisiana, we are standing up to stop their pipeline. There's nobody who is who has their hands on the equipment, who is fooling with the equipment, and I think that's really a distraction from the issue. You know, we understand who the violent party is. And the violent party is energy transfer partners. Yes, some people have taken particular action along public, uh, along other pipeline routes to stop the pipeline. That has happened, but that has been very rare. And what we are doing in Louisiana is peaceful civil disobedience that is within our rights, right? And I should say that, um, you know, th there is a reason people are taking action like that, because the systems that are supposed to be protecting us are clearly failing, as we're seeing in Louisiana. There's a protest outside um, Cipriani's today yes. uh, where U.S. Bank is being yes. honored. Why? Because U.S. Bank is receiving an award for being a good uh, corporate citizen when, in fact, they are funding and fueling the violence by energy transfer partners. So we'll be there to encourage U.S. Bank to, ke to keep the promise that it once made not to fund the pipeline, because it's their cash flow that's perpetuating the harm and the abuse in Louisiana. I mean, we have serious violations happening already in our state, where they are going in and chopping down cypress that are hundreds of years old, where they are going into a community that is already overwhelmed by pollution, that is already overwhelmed by racism, and adding to that problem. And, Pastor Harry Joseph, what are you hoping to get accomplished uh, in, in your presence here and in the continuing protests there? Well, I'm hoping somebody listening, somebody hears that uh, we already have enough in our community. and. We don't need nothing else because we have people that's living there now that are trying to figure out how they're going to get out because people there, we're not rich, we are poor people, and they have already bought the white out. And we as blacks are there wondering what we're going to do because we got to raise our kids and we have our children coming up sick. So they got a lot of people that would love to get out of this community. Oh. 
because then no other things are coming in. Well, we have to leave it there, but we will certainly continue to follow the story. Pastor Harry Joseph um, and Rolfus of Louisiana Bucket Brigade and Pamela Spees of the Center for Constitutional Rights. And we have this breaking news. President Trump has just fired Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and replaced him with CIA Director Mike Pompeo. Trump announced CIA's Deputy Director Gina Haspel will be tapped to succeed Pompeo at the CIA. The Intercept reports Gina Haspel was directly involved involved in the CIA's torture program under George W. Bush. She was responsible for running a secret CIA black site in Thailand where prisoners were waterboarded and tortured. That does it for our show. I mean, The Goodman with Juan Gonzalez.